Green Cooling scores with the 13 Pro-Am Community Rugby League Show. Hello Rugby League fans, hello Community Rugby League fans, hello Rugby League fans everywhere. Yes, this is the Community Rugby League Show, the 13 Pro-Am Community Rugby League Show. My name's Dave Parkinson, we're back once again. Hello Steve, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, thanks Parky. I've got, got to say... Uh, uh, Quite a few uh, results to to get through tonight with regards to uh, all the games that are in play, and surprisingly, quite a few have been uh, been cancelled because of the weather. Mm. Who'd have thought it? Who'd have thought in March? Yeah, I, I thought well, it was April showers and all no, that. No, no, they always said, "Don't they be worthy eyes of March?" Uh-huh. So I keep saying this, don't I? I've been saying it since we kicked the season off. And <laughs> yeah, as a result, uh, you know, there's a few things, a few games that have been switched about and and what have you. We'll bring you all up to date with those. We'll also give you a little bit of an update on the game that we were at on Saturday. Uh, We've got some fantastic audio to play you. Once again, some audio highlights and uh, winning and losing reaction as well. Um, But yes, I want to start us off, if I may, up in Cumbria. Uh, with the with the Carla League, so this was the Holman Eagles and Premier Division Phase One. So um, it all got underway, uh, and we have a couple of results from this division. So a Spatria ten, Kells forty at half time. It was sixteen points to nil in favour of uh, Kells. Um, they had try scorers from Todd Woods, who grabbed two, Kieran Halcrow, who also scored two, Danny Greers. Brody Rutherford, Casey Chambers, plus one other, which there's no details for. I'm guessing it must have been muddy. Maybe they weren't able to identify who it was. You know, and maybe it was a bit like the uh, that that uh, video that I I was talking about last week, which was uh, uh, had been done by um, uh, Juby Moore. Oh yeah, yeah. You could you could oh, you could see it. everybody played in the same kit. Didn't yeah, they? yeah. <laughs> uh, Todd Woods kicked four goals as far as Kells were concerned. In response, Espatria, they had uh, scorers in the form of Stuart Crichton and Ben Tootle. Uh, and a penalty goal went the way of Ben Tootle as well. The man of the match for Espatria was a guy called Keenan Foster. The man of the match for Kells was Casey Chambers. In the other game that took place, it was Flimby 6, Glasson 38. Uh, Glasson leading by 18 points to nil at half time. Um, and they had really uh, Johnny Ossel to thank for their success in this one. He scored a hat trick. Uh, Matt Johnson, who uh, has, I know has just celebrated his birthday, by the way, uh, he is the fitness and conditioning coach up at Workington. He's still playing his community rugby league, you know. Um, and I know Matt because he was the uh, fitness and conditioning coach when uh, Barlow went over to Fiji. Oh, he yeah. was on that tour with myself and Gary Hewer and all those other guys as well. So he was on the score sheet as well at the weekend. Scott Burns, John Dolikin, uh, Matt Burns and Connor Wilson also going over for tries. Tyler Beals kicking three goals for Glasson. Uh, Flimby, they did get themselves on the scoreboard in the second half. Andrew Cartwright going in for their lone try. The conversion came courtesy of Danny Weir. The man of the match for Flimby was Sam Fearon. A man of the match for Glasson, Dean Jones. And that was in a 38 points to six win as far as Glasson were concerned. <laughs> Unfortunately, there was a uh, couple of games that uh, didn't get played as well. So Lauka against Dissington A. The game was off because the field was unplayable. And then Wathbro A up against Ellenborough A was a uh, game off because Ellenborough couldn't raise a team. And then Askham, they were going to be taking on Hensingham A at home. And unfortunately, that game got called off as well as uh, Hensingham couldn't raise a side as well. So from, from that respect, it's a little bit disappointing that mm. at such an early stage of the season. Um, there's a couple of teams that haven't been able to raise sides and I hope that's something that I, I know it's a, bu- a great book bird of yours it is when, yeah. when we discuss rugby league that's outside of the national conference yeah, league yeah and, and I, I understand the reasoning behind it but but I think that you know that the, there could be a better solution to how it is managed uh, so that it doesn't affect other teams because I think that's what, what it does uh, I mean, I'm delighted again that we get to mm. talk about Flimby as one of the new guys, yeah. uh, uh, you know, on the block. Um, it's great to be mentioning teams like Askham again, because not that long ago, Askham were a, a bit of a force 
in Division Two of the National yeah, Conference Yeah, I remember you saying, yeah. Um, you know, they had a, a number of excellent players, to be honest. They, strangely enough, have gone on to play for Egremont. Yeah. Or have gone higher up the, you know, the rugby league chain and gone on to play for Barrow and, you know, um, Whitehaven, to name but a couple of them. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm delighted that they're starting to make their way back, you know, into into circulation again mm. after what has been a, a lean time from a, an open age point of view over the last few years. So those are your uh, games that took place at the weekend, just the two results, uh, and we'll have another round up next week. Um, I want to also now come to what happened in the Northwest Men's League, Steve. Right, uh, so yeah, He always I, throws his curveball at me, I'll tell you. So I know again, you know, that there was a, a number of um, games that didn't take place. That's right, yeah. So we'll uh, we'll, we'll have a scoot through uh, the results and uh, I can tell you what games uh, were called off. Uh, so we'll, we'll kick off in the uh, Northwest Men's Prem uh, and we kicked off with uh, Blackbrook nil, Urse Finch 34. Oh, that's another strong game from yeah. Urse Finch, that is an it? They won 52-4, didn't they, in the first Something game Something along season. those lines. If you remember lightly, I, I highlighted this one as a, a, I thought, you know, it would be a good match. Yeah, uh, I never thought uh, that well, it, it was for Hurst Finch, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> but I, and keeping Blackbrook scoreless at home as well. Yeah. That's that's really good. Then we've got uh, two games, which this is really going to surprise. And uh, if there was a, a bet, Fred, could I put my money on these two results? It's Foley Lane 24, Ashton Burrs 24. Okay, nice one. Nice close game. And then we've got Holton Farmworth on it's 18, Oral St. James 18. Uh, and another one, nice close game. What an outstanding, what a couple of outstanding results those are. I bet they were really, really good games to watch. You know, that's a that's a good result for Foley Lane, I think, because Ashton Burrs, as we've we've said before, they're always in that top four or five. They're always pushing the the, the top of the prem there, uh, and obviously Alton Farm with Hornets. We go on about how many players that they produce for yeah. Super League, and, and we keep we and, keep and talking about it. And the fact that they still keep turning out teams at open age level, yeah. despite being, um, uh, shall we say, seeing lots of their players move into the professional ranks yeah. and going, you know, to because we, we've seen it in the past, haven't we? Where at times they lose almost the entire age groups, yeah. don't yeah. they, to to the professional it, ranks? It's like a bit of a cull in some some respects when it, when it the is. big chunk goes. It, it is, you know, but um, yeah, fa- fantastic result that yeah. one. Yeah, yes, and and of course, Oddle St James, uh, uh, current champions at the moment. I mean, obviously that's a, a, a great result for uh, Alton Farmers. Uh, then we got Isham Adams, who we were speaking to, uh, or you were speaking to, and we were talking about last week. Uh, uh, the game uh, was off. Uh, then we've got Latchford Albion 18, Shevington Sharks 38. So okay. uh, Latchford uh, going down uh, at home. Then we moved into the. That, no- that was like the Martin Ellis. Uh, that was like the Martin Ellis derby, that, because he, he used to coach up at Sheffington. Ah, I see, I see. I didn't know that. Now, Northwest Men's Division 1, Charlie Panthers 26, Dalton 32. Oh, great result. Good away, that? That's another high scoring game, that one. Yeah. Uh, this next one is it bringing the uh, bringing the team back down to earth because it's Salford City Roosters eighteen Burtonwood Bridge four. Oh right, okay. Yeah, so uh, still a fairly low scoring affair that one though, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, you know, so much. they're not they're not that far off the pace there, are no, they? No, uh, but uh, I mean, obviously it's that step up, and it, they've been a little bit of pace setters from the first couple of weeks, but uh, just uh, just tagged back a little bit, bit there, Burtonwood Bridge. Then we've got Thatterweed Crusaders a twenty two Hindley thirty. Okay. Uh, and also in that division, we had West Orton Lions against Goldburn Parkside and Wigan St. Cusperts against Ulverston. Again, both casualties, casualties to the weather, I believe. Then we were moving... Sorry, you can say that? Uh, well, I was just going to say as well, you know, St. Cusperts can be a heavy pitch oh. anyway, so uh, that um, it doesn't surprise me. And it, it, was, it was a fairly wet weekend again, yeah. wasn't it? I think what it is as well, you know, I, I think we discussed this and, and obviously we'll come on to this again a little bit later on. Uh, but the, the weather hasn't been really, from a rain point of view, hasn't really been torrential. Do you no, know what I mean? It's just been consistent. Yeah, hasn't and it? it's, <laughs> and, but it's not going away. It, it's holding, you know, because around where I live here at the, currently at the moment, I mean, it usually when it rains, I mean, you get flooding so quick, it's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. But within the space of, least 24 hours it will all go away i mean 
mean, no problem, it will go away. But even round here now, it's, it's it's holding quite a lot. And there's quite a few places, you know, sort of uh, in and around, which are very much the same as well. And it's like I work in North Manchester, yeah. you know, so some of the roads that are around about North Manchester have just been deluged. Yeah. Um, you know, and uh, and as a result, there's like massive, massive puddles that yeah. just don't seem to be going away. Yeah. And, and and as I say, I don't think it's every downpour. So I think it's just that, that constant, you know, you, even when it's, it, it's stopping now because things are hanging around. If you get another a rainfall in the afternoon, because the other hasn't gone away, it's just lying on top. And how slow it's getting to go away, it's, it's always there. So it doesn't need that heavy... A heavy downpour would really, really cause a hell of a lot of problems but uh, and I mean let's be honest not everywhere is like where we went at the weekend where they can usually play 99 times out of 100, 100 yeah, yeah yeah anyway we're moving on into uh, North West Men's Division 2 Ashton Burrs A versus Warsaw Warriors A uh, that wasn't on or, or I'm saying it wasn't on I haven't got a result for that one so I'm, I'm presuming that was a casualty as well as was Heimbull Tigers against Roos Pioneers uh Rochdale Mayfield A twenty four Wigan Springview nil. Oh, that's a good result. Or or was the game played? Because we all know that twenty four nil is is a bit of the default scoreline. That's isn't right. It? Yeah. So I'm I'm not sure on that one. Uh, as yet, I've not seen anything where uh, games have been forfeited uh, or anything like that at all. West Bank Burrs twelve Lee Miners Rangers A fourteen. Then down into Division Three, we've got. Caddis Head Rhinos 10, Bank Key Bulls 34. Good result. Yeah, it's a certainly, as, as we said last week, uh, you know, they're, they're certainly moving forward and doing, you know, uh, great guns there in Division 3. And certainly when we've seen them last year, you know, I, I saw them play in the, uh, the, the North West Men's League Cup Finals mm. day. Uh, you saw them a little bit later on and when it came to Grand Finals That's right, day, yeah, didn't you? Yeah. And, um, they can play some magnificent stuff, yeah. can't they? Yeah, yeah, good, good side. Uh, Clockface Miners A four, Blackpool Scorpions eighteen. Oh, really? that's a cracking result for Blackpool sure Scorpions. Is. Yeah, that would be a good result at home. You had a long away from home. Yeah, 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 that's an outstanding result. That. Yeah, uh, Oldham Saint Anne's A versus Higginshaw. I haven't got a result for them. And then we've got Runcorn Highfield twelve, Garswood Stags twenty. Oh. So from what I can gather, it's that is the first loss at all for Runcorn Highfield for I think it's a couple of seasons now, if, okay. I'm, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, so uh, it's a bit of a bit sort of a little uh, uh, a poke in the eye, but it again much the same as I was saying before about uh, Burton Wood. It just shows you that you know stepping up a division, you know, is going to be a challenge in in, in some areas, but. Uh, I see how they go moving forward because it's not exactly the the end of the world as they say. No, no. And Division Four is Bolton uh, at a buy this week. Chester Gladiators thirty, West Orton Lions a thirty six. Oh, great! Some Winning points that. there. There's yeah. a lot of points scored, as you said. Uh, this was one I highlight, highlighted last week. It was Haydock versus Liverpool Lizards, and I said obviously that would be a tester for Liverpool Lizards, and it would show them of you know. What, what sort of opponents they, they could be facing. And it was Airdock 48, Liverpool Lizards 4. Really? Yeah, so... That, what a result that yeah. is. But I, as I said, I, I think Airdock... Uh, do you know what? I'm going to nail the McCullers to the mast here. Okay. I think Airdock could go through that, that season undefeated. Really? I do, honestly. Uh, that's, a, that's a big, bold claim, is, that is. I, I, I've not seen, as I say, you know, so it's the, the couple of team sheets, they've, they've, they've got a... Uh, a, a good team together there. Langworthy Reds were the next team up against Culture Eagles, and it was Langworthy Reds 32, Culture Eagles 20. And finally, Oral St. James A team, they were up against Portico Vine. I, th- I think this might have been Portico Vine's first uh, uh, official game, and it was Oral St. James A 50, Portico Vine 20. So I'm not sure of what St. James is, is A team's like, but if it's anything like you know, the, the quality that they've got in the first team, then uh, that doesn't surprise me in that respect. We know they're a strong club, don't mm. we? You know, yeah. and um, o- unlike some others that are knocking around Wigan, um, they can name multiple teams, can't they, at yeah. the moment? So, um, you know, fair play to them. Um, but fair play to Portugal, Vine, for yeah. getting and scoring 20 points, because that, yeah. to me, shows plenty of promise moving forward. Yeah. It suggests they've just got one or two areas just to tighten up on, doesn't it, moving on? It's nothing to be ashamed of. It's Definitely something, not. something to build on, as they say. Uh, going forward to fixtures for next week, mm-hmm. we have got... Uh, 
Ashton Burrs up against Durst Finch. Now I've seen these two play last season and it, it was a good old tussle uh, and I'm sure it'll be the same. Uh, then we've got Alton Farnworth on its day playing Isham Hattams. Lights with Albion, they're well, they should have been playing Blackbrook, I believe, Parky. You've got some information on this, haven't you? Yeah, we were going to be heading over there tomorrow night, actually, and broadcasting the game via Mixler. Mm. But unfortunately, anybody that was hoping to listen to us is going to have to find something else to do because the game has been called off due to a uh, waterlogged pitch. Um, I believe that Latchford have tried a couple of other options open to them, but haven't been able to get it over the line yeah. as such. So that's a, that's a game that will bite the dust for the uh, time. And this is something we were chatting uh, when we uh, were off air, because when you told me this was off, I was very surprised, obviously, knowing the, the Victoria uh, Park pitch, yeah, uh, yeah. how good it is. I mean, if it's had to be called off because of water, then, it, as I say, it's, it, there's some been put down on there, because that is, again... It's usually another one that drains really well. Yeah, but having having mm. said that, I mean, that is one of the main flood plains mm. in Warrington where it's all been built on. So yeah. um, this was one of the reasons why when they actually built that ground, it's on stilts. Yeah. So if, um, if, if you ever get the chance, you know, I know because I've been quite lucky with a couple of my other things that I've done down the last few years, um, that going to the dressing room area, yeah, it's not on the ground floor. Ah. It's on the first floor. First floor, yeah. Yeah, because if you notice, they've yeah. got to like step out and go down. That's the right. Stairs, yeah. Now you mention it, yeah. And come round the front. That's right. Yeah. And that's the reason. So they didn't build it on the floor because it's one of the floodplains. Yeah. So if ever they've got to open the floodgates, mm. for example. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that the place does actually flood, and that legitimately it doesn't flood the club out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's got to be said. Uh, I mean. Again, around here, it's not rained that ever. It's just m- mustn't be going away. It must be, you know, mm. must be full, as, as, as I say, in, in this sort of area. So, uh, yeah, it's a shame. I was looking far- forward to that because I think you know me. I always like a. Uh, Either a Friday or Thursday night lights game. It's, oh, there's it's a, always an atmosphere. There and is. There's just something special about yeah, it, isn't there? You know, yeah. but particularly from a community point of view, because we don't see that many midweek games, do we? Because usually people are working. Um, it's a big mad rush to get things. Well, on. not not only that, Parky. When you you play on a Thursday or a Friday, because you know it it allows a from a player's point of view, it allows them to free up the weekend to be with the family and do anything they want to do there. But also from a supporter's point of view, they more chance of more supporters actually going out and watching it because they don't want to be tied up, you know, to be doing other things on, yeah. on the Saturday, much the same as the, the players might be in that, that respect. So it's, uh, you know, it, 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 it's not, all, the ones I've always been to on the Thursday or Friday have always been well attended. Mm-hmm. And certainly, the, usually, obviously being local, they've been the Northwest men's ones that I've been to. And I've always been, you know, really well attended. Uh, so yeah, at the Ashton Burrs vs Finch one. I thought that might have been uh, pushed to a Friday. You know, certainly because as we're getting close to uh, Easter, etc. Maybe next week there might be. I don't know. We will see. But that's Latchford Albion against Blackbrook. So that's not on tomorrow. Shevington Sharks. They will be taking on Foley Lane in Division One. Well, it's the the, the battle of the two promoted sides, and uh, these two went toe to toe last season. On numerous occasions, and it's Burtonwood Bridge up against Goldburn Parkside. Uh, so uh, yeah, we'll see the the outcome of that one. Then we've got Inley. They will be welcoming Dalton uh, to their ground. So Wigan St Cuthbert's will be travelling over to Salford City Roosters, and Tatterwith Crusaders A will be uh, welcoming in Ulverston. Uh, West Orton Lions. They will say uh, a big hello to Charlie Panthers. And Division 2, we've got Newton Storm. Well, they've got another a long trip uh, up the motorway. Uh, well, fortunately, it's not two weeks in a row because they had a free week last week, but they're up going to Hindpool Tigers. The E-Miners Rangers A, they will take on Rochdale Mayfield A. Uh, Roos Pioneers, uh, I know they've had their game changed and they will now play Wigan Springview. Okay. Uh, West they were originally down to play Ashton Burrs A, wasn't they? That's correct, that's correct. And uh, now West Bank Burrs, they will take on Waterhead Warriors A. Division 3, we see Oldham St. Anne's A travel to, uh, over to Banky Bulls. And Clockface Miners A, well, they'll travel to uh, Caddis Head Rhinos. Garswood Stags, they welcome Wigan St. Jude's A. And Lee East A, they will welcome uh, Hickinshaw. 
whilst Blackpool Scorpions, well, they will be travelling over to uh, Runcorn Highfield. Division 4, we've got, uh, and this is one that I like, because of the two teams, and you know these two teams we always like because of, they're not what you would call uh, uh, heartland grounds as, as such. You've got okay. Bolton Norrell FC up against Chester Gladiators. But there are two two teams now, or two names, that are becoming synonymous in this this fix. It's not unusual in, in, in that sort of sense, which is, which is fantastic. So it'll be interesting to see how they go. Then we've got Cultures Eagles. They will be welcoming ADOC. Langworthy Reds, they've got Liverpool Lizards. And then finally, wrapping things, we've got up. We've got Oral St James A up against West Orton Lions A. Uh, so if you are involved with any of those clubs, you go to any of those games. Let us know how would they get on, because we'd love to be able to bring you a couple of match reports uh, and and add a bit of context to the sort of stuff that we talk about. So they can tweet us at 13 Proam RL. You can drop me a message at Dave Parkinson RL. They can even drop you a message, can't they? At Steve underscore Beach RL. I'm glad you remembered it. I, I never remember it. That's Beach, B-E-E-C-H. Yeah. As no. in tree, as people always say. As in tree. Make <laughs> like a tree and leave. No, 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 that's what you'll be saying to me afterwards. Um, so, yes. Um, we get a belated start to the Yorkshire men's competitions as well this mm. week. So, it's the turn of the shield. And uh, here are the fixtures. So it's Sherburne Burrs up against the Rycroft Hammers. Keithley Albion Academy hosting Ulton Raiders. Bramley Buffaloes are on the road at Farnley Falcons. It's uh, Cottingham Tigers at home to Charleston Rovers Academy. Greatland All-Rounders, they travel over to Geisley Rangers. Uh, Ghoul Vikings, they're on a road trip to Dewsbury Moor. We have Stanley Rangers A away at Newsom Panthers A. Lindley St. Joseph's there at home to Crigleston All Blacks. And finally, according to this fixture list anyway, it's Garforth Tigers up against the Moortown Mambas. Oh, I like that. Tell you what. I like that. I need to speak to the Moortown yeah. Mambas. Yeah, I like yeah, that. Yeah, that, they're going to have a big snake on their, <laughs> uh, on their badge, aren't they? I think that's what a Mamba is, isn't it? I don't it? know. It's that, I wonder what the number five looks like. I don't know. The Mamba number five. Mamba number five, yeah. <laughs> I missed that one, didn't I? That, co- that went completely over my head. I'd like to say I was too young for that, oh, but, uh, you but you know. You've heard of Jesus, so you can start that one now. Yeah, you, you know that's a lie, to be fair. So, uh, yeah. Um, so, pl- plenty to look forward to as well. I've also got the fixtures now, as far as the uh, Holman Eagles and Cumberland League is concerned. So, this coming Friday, the teams that are due to take their place are Wathbro Hornets A up against Dissington A, Egremont Rangers A up against Hensingham A. And then on Saturday, uh, it's Spatria against Maryport, Lauka against Cockermouth Titans, Flimbit are hosting Allenborough Rangers A, and Askham, they've got a home tie against Glasson Rangers. So that is your fixtures from a, a Cumberland point of view. Was you going to add something there, Steve? I, I, I was parky, but... Uh... Oh, it could be a little bit of this. Ladies and gentlemen, this, this is Mambo number, number five. Number five. Cut it, well, cut well, it, we'll cut stop it. it. We'll We've got to stop, stop it. it. We'll, be getting a, we'll, we'll be getting asked to pay royalties, <laughs> won't we? We don't have the money for royalties. <laughs> uh, but one, two, three, four, five. Five, yeah. <laughs> Everybody in the car, now come on and drive. <laughs> We're going over to Moortown Mambas. Oh, there we go. Anyway. <laughs> you digressed. How, do, how, how can I follow that up? How can I follow that up? Well... We're going to try. We're going to talk National Conference League. But before we go any further with any of the other results from last weekend, I want to bring you action and reaction to the game that we were at last week. So, um, Pilkington Rex proved some superb hosts for us, didn't they? Really good to get over yeah, to. Yeah. Ruskin Drive. Um, and what a good game it was too as well. Uh, a certain Callum Cashin was the hero on the day. Yeah. He's a guy with some pace, isn't he? Oldham St. Anne's just about winning through. But here's the best of the action, followed by some reaction. Lovely pass again. It's a clear run to the line. Can he get the ball down? This could be the opening score. Jack Taylor thinks he scored it. And it's a warning. What a great movement. 
just for a second there Croy was running down a blind alley then he, he thought he spotted a little gap by the side of the post just put down close to that line they'll go forward from Dougie Half cash in he's gone over as he grounded it referee checks with his touch judges he's going to award this yes, try and there are 8 points to the good at Oldham St Anne's 5 metres out from the line Riley Oh, oh, and again, the they dropped it back. And oh, it's in. I think no. that's the move yeah. that we were being told about, which Morris scores off all the time. He's ran in 15 tries last season, and they just high hit him there a little bit behind the play of the ball. He hits the ball right at the angle uh, and just steamrolls his way through. Keys has something of a high shot head his way, in my opinion. Penalty didn't come, though. Riley darts forward for Dummy. He's in. He's, He's been in. watching. Oh. Because he's just darted forward out of dummy half. Oh, Everybody straight bought from, it. Straight from nowhere there. Ten all with kick to come. Riley. Cooks it back. Oh! oh it's Morris again. Morris driving through. Getting over the line. He stretches the advantage. Second try of the game for him right at the start of the second half. It's now Pilkington Rex 16. Oldham sent out as 10 from dummy half trying to spin and smuggle four points he's gone over the line oh he's just about stopped he's oh, back in the field I think he's giving or is no, he going I think the ref's giving he's yeah, being he celebrated yeah. Cashin has smuggled his way in feeds it wide to Rose Rose on this pass out to Cashin oh. leaves two in his way oh. takes on the full back he's beaten him that's a quality quality finish what a pass in the first place from Rose and what a finish from Cashin he went past three players like they weren't there and all them St Anne's they're in front again by 20 points to 18 eventually wrestled down by Josh O'Connell who seems to come from nowhere to snatch his boots but they've got an overlap and it's out down this left hand side well fed back in field a terrible pass it'll come up though and Cashin will dart him for his second score Goes left. O'Connell. Derek oh! is on it. Derek chasing through. Ooh. What a kick forward that was from Josh O'Connell. <laughs> <laughs> and what a touchdown from Derek. Connick gets a kick away. The six players chasing after it. Oh, well oh. taken from Cashin. Cashin takes on Derek. Half gets away from him. He's still going here. He's cashing. He's oh, still going, going over the halfway line. Oh, I'll tell you what, put down the glasses. He's away. He's Is away. He's oh, away. Yes. All the way oh, to the yes. post. That's a classic hat trick from Callum Cashin. And what a way to get it. He just wouldn't give up at all. He seems to have half the Pilkington Rex team chasing after him. That rushes him back inside his own 20. And the referee's whistle brings an end to the game. It's a win for Oldham St Anne's. 13 Pro-Am Community Rugby League Show. Discussing the greatest game at all grassroots levels. OK, I'm joined by Oldham St Anne's skipper uh, Callum Fletcher. Callum, got to say, what a win that was. Really entertaining. Yeah, I think... Uh... You know, a massive statement about getting wins on the road, you know, coming up this season. Uh, obviously, newly joined the division this season and I think, you know, these ugly wins, winning ugly away is what's going to make the difference for us being up at the table or, you know, down the bottom end. So, I think today's win's massive for us. Yeah. Some key players missing as well, you know, that we've had to shuffle about a bit and I think, you know, a real effort from the boys throughout, yeah. Well, well, it's well no, you know, because I mean, like, when, when, when I look down St. Anne's team sheets, it's yeah. normally yourself that's been playing now with yeah. Michael being like loose forward or coming off the bench um, I've just got to ask as well because he, he's off to Australia after this yeah, what, yeah. A, what a way to, yeah, to sort of chime out yeah he's a he's a real good kid Cash he put some real efforts in you can see that got a real enjoy on him I think he'll have a real dig in Australia but what a way to bow out you know and win like that away so yeah big raps to him and, and to the boys as well for the full eight to performance was it also good to see Callum amongst the tries again I mean, yeah. he, he was a regular try scorer last yeah, year yeah. wasn't he he's a prolific try scorer you know, you know it can still if it out when he can get in the right areas you know he's got the pace as well if he gets an open space you fancy him nine times out of ten to finish it so obviously he's done that a few on a few occasions today and uh it made it change the game for us i think you know backing up and on the on the, on the end of things like that so i think i nearly lost my voice and he's like yeah. you know i mean that I was know, that we was were, some finish that we were the same we were like oh hey oh hey we didn't know if we were going to score or get tackled so. yeah because there was two yeah. or three times when it looked yeah. like they were got him and then suddenly yeah. he just like found another gear didn't he to get away yeah i mean he's like he looks like weight cash but to, to be fair to him he can he can take some hits and he, obviously that was a statement of of, of, what, of what that is so 
he managed to finish off, which was good, and I think that put the nail in the coffin for the game for us. So, yeah, massive efforts. You mentioned about lads moving around. I mean, yeah. you know, you've moved around as well. You yeah, know, obviously, you've, you've not got any Poggy alongside you yeah. today. Yeah. Um, he was one of the guys that was missing. Yeah. Um, how did you enjoy maybe doing a slightly different role? Because it is a big difference, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's. We, we tried to simplify the game plan a bit this week with with no Poggy and. Um, I think at first we started to get our head through in good ball and we were getting our head through in yardage, but I think it got a bit hectic at first and there were bodies everywhere and, and you know, rather than calming down, we spoke about being calm all week and I think it was a little bit hectic and I think in the second half we started to find our heads and we did play with a lot more calm calm about us and you could see that kicking in the right areas, turning them around. I think we spent a lot more time up, up in their end at half rather than back in our own. So, yeah, I think we... Like you said, it's hard. It's an hard position to play halfback because you're having to marshal a lot of people, and if you're not if you're not natural halfback, I think sometimes you can struggle to take to it. But I thought we just needed to come and get the job done with whoever was there, and I think we've done that today. Yeah. Because basically, with yourself, you've you've normally got two options, haven't you? Yeah, you, yeah. you pass to someone to create, of or you run. Yeah. Um, and you're having to take on more of a more of a keeping your eyes up, aren't yeah. you? I suppose. It's more of a like you say the role you. You're looking up, but you're also looking around what's going on your, on your side as well, and, and talking to players. You've got to probably do two or three things at once, you know. So it's a bit, it's a big, um, big job on your shoulders sometimes, especially like I said, when you're not a natural halfback and you're not used to that role. So yeah, we tried to keep it simple. Like I said, we we're a bit hectic in the first half, but I think the second half we found our feet a bit, and you know we, we completed in the right areas, kicked to the right areas, and I think you know that that put the nail in the coffee, like I said, in the end of. In the 80 minutes, so yeah, uh, I was really impressed as well with Saunders the way that he started the game. Yeah. It was like you know, first 25 30 minutes, mm. no one could hold him. No, he uh, real engine on Kyle, he's got great feet at the line, he's not one of them really direct forwards, he uses his feet really well, gets head through, and he bags of energy as well. You can see that when he comes on and off, you can see the energy levels pick up and he picks people up around him. And uh, yeah, he's a real good asset for us as a, as a middle. If we can talk a little bit wider, you know, because I, I know certainly at, at St. Anne's you've been pushing for promotion for a couple of years yeah, from yeah. that Division 3. You finally got it at the end of last season. Yeah. You're now mixing it with these other teams and you're holding your own. It, it's, it's looking like you're in for a good season, if you don't mind me saying. Yeah, I think, you know, we've had a, a good few years. Uh, obviously, Neil che- Cherry Home, Ches, you come in coaching. We've had a, another few bodies, Ollie Russell. Is coming and helping us, and we've had a few different opinions from that aspect of coaching, and I think that's just fired us up. We've obviously we got to the playoff final in 2022, was it? Lost to that unfortunately, but then we kicked on the year after, won the league. Yeah, and that I think, looked like it inspired yeah, you last year. Really. Yeah, I think it yeah. did, and I think this year we've come up with a lot of confidence and thought. I think previously we would have thought we'd come come to places like this and just compete, but I think we've got a lot of confidence in us now. We can come here, we can get the results and grind them out. Like I said, ugly wins, and they're the ones that count sometimes. The ones that mean a lot more to you if you're winning winning away ugly. I think you know it worked a pretty win at all. We had to fight for it, and but like I said, it's a massive stepping stone for us. We can just build on that hopefully for the season. For, for these guys that like commentating on games, though, I mean there was there was some skill out there. I mean that first try in yeah. the first couple of minutes where there was two. Two, two passes out of the back of the hand I mean they're beautiful to watch yeah yeah they're good I think they also encourage this this week the coaches to be a bit of off the cuff and what you see I think sometimes you fall in love with like when you're missing key players you know trying to stick to shape too much and you're not like I said you're not naturally into that role so I think we've encouraged us to play a bit of what you see and I feel like we, we played that a lot today and, and it paid off for us yeah um, looking at you next month you've got quite a few interesting fixtures coming yeah. up I mean yeah. perhaps not like no let's not get ahead of ourselves and look too far down the track but yeah. what, what about next week um, we've got tell a, tough, we've a got. tough test in Shawcross next week I mean they're going really well I think they'll, they'll definitely be, be top top up there top three maybe definitely so I think we've got a tough test in that um, and then looking further down the line yeah we've got another few away trips that are tough uh, I think we've got Marth Thornhill and, and Normans and so but more looking at next week you know we're going to have to be up for it we're going to have to match them physically we're a physical team they've got good skill amongst them so we've just got to match that and hopefully, you know, we're on the good side of the victory. Uh, I appreciate your time, Cheers. Colin. But just one last point, yep. and it's the fact that you look like you really enjoy playing with these lads. Yeah, they're a great group of lads. I think we built not just on the field, but off the field bond. And I think when you've got a, field, a good bond off the field, it really shows on the field in our performances. We're really willing to work for each other. And, you know, like you said, I love playing with these boys. And they, they want to win as much as I do. So it's, it's real credit to them. And, you know, we're a great group of lads. So I'm with John, man. John, um... Sadly, defeat for oh, yeah, you guys it. today. Um, how do you sum that one up? Oh, frustrating day. Another one, another frustrating day because the lads did a lot of good stuff. A lot of good stuff, a lot of positives. We showed we can score. We can score quite well. 
get our shape correct. Got a good set of middles there that work their ass, work, work really hard. You've got Lex Keezy, went to did an 80 minute spell for us today. Uh, so, a big man to shout for him uh, with the work he put in there and the efforts to go. Uh, made the, the guys really struggle with him in contact as well. And we've found our edges have got some pace on them as well to try and trouble the guys and get some, a good, good bit of footwork, some late steps there. Obviously, the disappointing side today is, is we gave up too many points. Uh, it's, it's the old adage, uh, you keep the other team out, they're always going to struggle to, to, to even get, get those two points. And that's where we need to kind of reset and have another look at uh, again going forward. Don't get me wrong, a lot of in, really good individual efforts in day. I think the guys have just got to really knuckle down and work as a unit in, in making things all tackles off collectively together. And then that gives us that added push to, to finish the game where we need to, especially uh, get them uh, tackled in their own half. So we get our next set starting off quite well and, and hit the good ball early doors. Uh, but also, we, we all know it's going to be frustrating here, the referees. Uh, and the lads, yeah, again, had another hard day where a few decisions didn't go the way and they just hit yeah, them a little bit. There was one or two quite contentious calls let's put it like that you know I don't want to get anybody in trouble of course you know but there's always going to be contentious calls yeah. always it's how you react uh, and yeah some of the reactions could have been a little bit better because then you had the knock on effect where when another decision didn't quite go our way it just egged them on a little bit more and, and we've, we've got a group of old old and young lads and they've all got to be conscious of, of, of where things are now with the refs and yeah, they, they, they know they can't have that reaction and it'll take the heat off a little bit and if we just focus on what we can do. Uh, we have a big thing where you've got to control the controllables at the end of the day. As a team, we can't control the decision make, the ref makes. The ref's not going to change the decision. We can't control what the opposition does, but we can control what we do in our day. And yeah, there's times where decision goes against us, we get ourselves heads on what we need to do in that next set and we're in a better position. Uh, but today we didn't didn't quite get there. Um, I mean, like, personally, I thought it was a good fight back because the way he started the game was, was very, very slow and they were really quick and they scored two fantastic tries before you'd really touch the ball. That's been the start of every game we've had. We've started the game flat. Uh, we've given up a few, a few, few tries early doors. But then when we grind, get into that arm wrestle, the boys have shown that they can grind it out and actually get on top of that arm wrestle quite quick. Uh, it's, it's just, yeah, we start a little bit, bit flat again in, in, in first half. Second half, the enthusiasm was there. Uh, you look like you got him as well for yeah. a time. And then, um, well, Callum Cashin is a, a natural try scorer. I think it was 20 tries he got last season and he's got away for a hat trick there. Yeah. Uh, we got that early try second half and, and we had them on the roll. But then... Decision goes against us, we give us some easy tries, and then from the light, guys pushing a little bit too hard, we saw a few breakaway tries happen uh, because of all those individual efforts to try and, try and correct something instead of trying to correct it as a, as a group. Uh, and the score kind of got away with uh, got away from us, but then again, we did knock it down, got to within two points, but then, yeah, straight after we just another, another bit of a individual effort in defence and they come away with a breakaway try again. I'm always one that wants to look ahead, you know, as you obviously now do, you know, to like the next set of games that you've got coming up, and it's a, it's a tough month ahead that you've got, isn't it? Yeah, it always is. It is. I mean, we're, we're on the road again, uh, up to Cumbria next weekend, uh, so we've got two big sessions to come up, two big training sessions. Definitely going to focus on our day on Tuesday, uh, try and get the bodies in position and in place to where they need to be for, for, for Saturday, and listen, that team was short today, an attack, especially in good ball, they can put points on. They can definitely put points on. But you've got to be able to do both sides of the game. And that's deal up, up your line. Uh, so we'll, we'll focus a bit on D. The lads will be ready. And they'll be good to go. Don't get me wrong. I mean, uh, it hurts. It's been quite a summer moment there in the change rooms. But we'll always take our positives. We'll work on them. And we'll go forward. And they were only three games in. We've got a long season ahead of us. So there's plenty of time to put what's not gone quite right in the right direction and we'll do it we'll definitely do it and the lads will enjoy again there as well and then they'll they'll, they'll they'll appreciate the hard work and probably how things have gone against us this year because it's all a learning curve 
Thanks Green Cooling keeps the 13 Pro Am Community Rugby League show cool, even when tackles get heated. Thanks to uh, John Mander uh, for stepping out <laughs> and uh, giving us some thoughts afterwards. And uh, I think we can agree with a lot of what he said there. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Uh, same as I said in commentary, I, I, it looked like to, to, to me the first sort of 10, 15 minutes, this could be a landslide. Because that's exactly what our Red Oss, uh, Oldham St. Tans, uh, you know, sort of were moving things around. And like you mentioned uh, to to Callum about the try they scored were the were the two flick two flick passes in one, in move. one movement. Oh, yeah, that yeah. was and and it was right in front of us. Top it draw, was glorious to see. And it's not something you don't really see in the amateur game unless you've got somebody who possibly has come through. You know, maybe a. Uh, a scholarship or academy system, so they've got that little bit more confidence and uh, feel they've got a bit more time. Uh, but that was was really really good. Uh, Saunders, who we were on about the <laughs> in that first half, was absolutely immense. He was you know sort of ten pin bowling pins knocked down everywhere, weren't they? When when I was um, reading through my notes afterwards mm. to put uh, a match report together that went on the RFL website on on Monday, I was like looking through and I'd made a note. Twenty seven minutes was when uh, there was the big clash between him and Morris. Yeah, because up until that point. He, there was no one got near Saunders, no, was no. there? No, and, and that was the, probably was a problem. He needed that Morris clash earlier earlier on to, to sort of, I suppose, temper things down a, link, a little bit. Uh, because Morris on, on the other side, I mean, when he got the ball, he had some really good, powerful runs. Probably not a, a, a enough really. Keys was the man who oh, was. Oh, he was tremendous. Immense, he, John Keys. Immense. You know. Um, you know, definitely one of the best forwards that's running around in that division, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, and has been doing it for a number of years now. He as has. Well. Yeah, he's yeah. been very, very consistent, hasn't he? From a from a Pilks point of view, I mean, obviously they're disappointed with the start that they've made to the season. But like John said, the it is a long season, isn't it? You know, so uh, they don't need to panic at this moment in time. But they could just do with, I don't know. Jagging away from somewhere, yeah, can't they, first yeah. of all. I mean, they've got a few youngsters in there who they've, they've, they've brought in, and and that's the correct thing to do. They, they need to, to blood them in, and and I mean, I know it's sort of like trial by fire to a certain extent because we saw Derek at fullback, who on from an attacking point of view, he was oh, on his feet, so light, and and you could see him getting in into players and moving along the line. Uh, but from a defensive point of view, probably had some frailties with with, with a couple of tries, which possibly could have done, done a bit better. Not just him, there was others as well. But that's the learning curve of it, isn't it, at the, at the end of the day? And I, I, all it can do is benefit him, because uh, as I said at the time, it... if he, if they can develop him, they've got a real, real winner there, I think. Let's put the boot on the other foot because we spoke to Callum Fletcher before. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I thought he led his side very, very well. Uh, and like I said in commentary, it's a position that we don't really see him do a lot. We don't often see him playing halfback. He's an arm with a nine. Mm. And, and I would guess that with uh, Michael Cashin heading down under, that he'll probably take up the position again with Richard Pogson coming back into that side. Yeah. They'll be much strengthened when Pogson gets back in because he's, he's played at a high level for a long time in his career. But what did you make of, of Oldham St. Alan's generally? Generally, I thought some of the play that you know that was really exciting and open... Uh, Got, got asked a question, throw this back at your pocket, how much will they miss cashing? Because uh, these tries are, you know, the, uh, are they going to have somebody to step in and, f- and fill that amount of tries in? Well, it's Michael cashing, mm. you know, like, so, but uh, you, you're right. I mean, mm. he crossed for two tries yeah. of his own, you know, at the, at the weekend and they came at crucial points. One of them, it, at first look, didn't look like he'd actually got it down, but mm. you, you'd you'd crossed it, you'd oh, watched I, it all I, the time. I, that I saw him. you saw him coming from a mile off. It's <laughs> just, uh, but uh, but yeah, he's a canny operator. Yeah. Whether he's playing at thirteen or playing at nine, yeah. is is Michael Cashin, and he'll be a a real boost for the club that he's joining in Australia. Yeah. Um, and when you do lose class, as we've seen with other sides, as we've seen with players that's moved into the professional game, mm. um, there is. There, there is 
like a period where things have to get used to yeah. the, the time without, haven't they? Yeah. You know, so um, I thought it would be but interesting. The, but, I, I mean, I, I, I was impressed with, with all them sent talents, to be yeah. honest. I like the way that they played. The tries that they scored were largely of a, a high standard. Oh, yeah. There was, you know, in, in Callum Cashin. I mean, he's such an exciting player. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've got, got to say, you were mentioning Fletcher there, and, and you've, got, you've got to say that when he does go to nine, the thing is you've got somebody there who's good, good at playing half-back and good, good at playing, good at playing at nine, nine as well. So he's he's the perfect guy. Yeah. He understands his role within the side. Mm. He understands, you know, he was talking there about playing a very different role in almost looking at where the team goes and uh, admittedly they had to... Um, sort of make the game plan a little bit simpler mm. last week but it, it worked for right. them didn't yeah. it you know and, and I thought they showed a lot of character actually when they went eight points down at the start of the second half because I think another score there for Pilks who were pressing for a yeah. bit of a time yeah. if they'd then gotten 22 points to 10 up you're talking of that's a different game isn't yeah. it that's a very very different game and, and you know they had to win that twice didn't they because yeah. we said as Pilks have gone into half time in the lead yeah mm. from that first 10 minutes or so we we was we were stunned to a certain extent when they were, did go in the lead uh, but it was good because we knew there was a fight back on second half they, they kept that pressure on early second half and then ran out of steam maybe a little bit I don't know uh, but certainly then uh, St Anne's you know capitalised on that and they, they turned the screws from their point of view, and it, it was it was end to end stuff. There was some really really good uh, good rugby played, and I mean on on a blowy day, because I'm sure if you were listening to it live, I mean even on the recordings there, but it uh, uh, the wind had come and a blow around, and yeah. and then it would just suddenly stop, yeah, and then you give you'd have about three four minutes, and it would kick up again. So it wasn't as if you could guarantee that. All oh, right, I've got the wind here, I can yeah, put that definitely. ball in, and it was swirling as well, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So that, that was the difficult thing. But overall, a, a very good game. Oh, one, yeah. One that we certainly, you know, enjoyed. And uh, let's have more of it. Let's yeah. have more of it. We'll have more mixed coverage to come, which we'll, we'll tell you about. Yeah. Can I just, just mention where we've got, got, got to say uh, Tom Connick uh, mm -hmm. is kicking. He, we're talking about that wind. He's kicking game in that wind. I mean, was really, really good. And we, we were talking about John Keyes, how he's been doing his game for years. To, Tom Connick as well. I mean, okay, pace wise, he's, he's slowed down, but he's still got it upstairs and he controls his team and moves him around the park. Really, really good. Yeah, certainly, certainly. Um, right, let's have a look at what happened elsewhere. So, in the Premier Division, I, I want to start off because this is a result that kind of surprised me a little bit, but. I said fair play. Egremont Rangers 12, Wathbrow Hornets 8. We've got a match report from this as well, yeah. to be fair. So uh, this has been penned from our friends at Egremont. Two principles applied today. Defence wins prizes and possession is nine-tenths of the law. Vital junctures of the game. Today, Wathbrow lost possession on the line or near the line and Egremont made it, Egremont made it count. First game for a long time that there was two official line judges assisting the young referee uh, who also benefited from that. Well done to the three officials. There was good, honest rugby league played at pace under difficult condition, conditions. End-to-end, -end, hard, hard tackling. It was anyone's game. Someone had to do something special. Step forward, JP Brocklebank. There was a powerful drive to the line and Mitchell Edwards anticipated the next movement, taking a great ball under the sticks. Conversion went the way of Matt Buescher, six points to nil with 30 minutes gone. Rangers were buoyed with the lead and everyone held firm, keeping Bro out until half time when it remained six points to nil. Egremont showed great fitness levels, moving the ball at great pace from their own line nearly every play, into passing the ball back into the Bro 25-yard line for JP again to stamp his authority on the game, setting Paul Corkill up to show his guile, scoring an excellent try. The conversion again successful from Matt Buescher, 12 points to nil after 45 minutes. Game on. Bro 
gave maximum effort, but equally, Egremont Rangers withstood every attack until Brown moved the ball well, going over in the corner. There was no conversion, and it was 12 points to four. Um, and uh, that was 50 plus minutes. Who wanted it most? Well, both teams demonstrated that they wanted it. Rooney and King tried every trick in the book for the next try, and so it was with Brow scoring out wide. There was no conversion. 12 points to 8 heading into the last 10 minutes. Another 18 minutes was played, but Rangers were not going to be beaten, and tackling like dervishes got them worthy victory. Every player should hold their head up high because they beat a very good Brow team. Thanks to both teams for giving us a fantastic day's rugby league and three officials equally controlling the game very well. Uh, thanks for that report. I, yeah, I do like that. it when it love gives us that. a little bit more context, yeah. doesn't it, as well? And it, it shows that there's a lot of um, there's a lot of work that's gone on there at Egremont. And let's be honest, the some of the nearest and dearest of Othbro Harnets, so they've got local bragging rights now. That's right, they? yeah, yeah. Uh, so it finished Egremont Rangers 12, Wathbro Harnets 8. There was a hat-trick hero to tell you about. So this happened in Rochdale Mayfield's win over Lock Lane when uh, Australian centre Dakota Tolhurst, he grabbed three tries in a convincing 34-16 win. Elsewhere... Hunslet had to be at their best to defeat Thatterweath Crusaders 22 points to 10. Siddle proved too strong for West Bowling, winning by 40 points to 4. Mm. You asked me last week, what's happened at West Bowling? Yeah. Uh, do you recall that over recent seasons, we've been talking about Harry Williams playing at 6 for them? Yes, yes. Uh, an excellent goal kicker. Yeah, yeah. Great prompter. Fantastic uh, standoff at uh, conference level. Yeah. He signed for Hunslet. Ah. So he's no longer playing for them. Right. So again, we talk about you, you mentioned before pivotal man though about mm. you know how, how would St Anne's go with a yeah. Michael Cashin yeah. moving forward? who's a pivotal player. They've got to find a way of West Bowling oh. of being able to, to to get in. But they were they were well in with a chance in that one. I know that doesn't sound like yeah. it at forty points to four, but at half time it was a low score. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then Siddle, well. I, I think they're out. I, I know you've nailed your colours to a mast. I'm nailing mine to Siddles. I think Siddle are going to get in the playoffs this yeah. time round. I, I think that they're in for a yeah. much better season. Because like, like we've said, they've, they've had a couple of seasons, haven't they? Were yep. they've you know sort of uh, flattered to deceive as it as it were. And having seen them, you know, sort of. Uh, going we saw back clock face, oh yeah we? yeah and they were good and that really day really good really good yeah uh, now West Hull they secured a comeback victory against Hewitt 24 points to 10 but an interesting point about this game was that it was switched in the middle of the week because of the amount of uh, you know, rain that's been put yeah, down in Hewitt yeah, and yeah. The, uh, they had to cancel all of their games what were being played at the weekend yeah. actually so it just shows how, how much you know, it has affected uh, things uh, around the country. Um, but, you know, I think youth can take a lot forward from that in only losing by 14 points. At West Hull, who are mm. traditionally one of the strongest teams in the competition. Uh, and York Acorn finally got the uh, National Conference League Premier Division uh, season underway. Uh, obviously, we know that they've been heroic in the Challenge Cup. We've mentioned about them, we followed them, we did a commentary from their game against Wolfbro, which will still go down as one of my favourite yeah, games, I feel. Yeah. And I'll say this at an early point, I don't think we'll see many, many more open games than what that one no, was. No, that was, that was really good, wasn't it? Uh, but they uh, got up to a comfortable 28 points to 12 win over Kells. In Division 1, there was another hat-trick hero. Well, in fact, Adrian Holdsworth actually scored four tries in a dominant Alton Raiders display against Hull Dockers. So that one finishing 56 points to 10 in favour of Alton Raiders. Elsewhere, well, Warrington's painted uh, uh, blue and yellow after Crossfields beat Wollstone Rovers 36 points to 18. Seems close on the scoreboard, that one. Crossfields scored eight tries. Yeah. Just didn't uh, kick many goals by the way. Yeah. Two, was only it? kicked two goals. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, so Lee Miners Rangers also got away to a decent win up at Ince Rose Bridge as well. 28 points to 16. Um, for me, Ince Rose Bridge are a real nuggety side. 
And I think any team that's going over to them and getting a yeah. result. Uh, I mean, I know I scoffed at an article which Phil Hodgson wrote in the League Express where he tipped Intro Bridge to finish bottom of that mm. competition. I just can't see it. I can't see it. They've got some good players, though. Um, got, got to see uh, Lance a lot on the score sheet, though. He's, he's been crossing quite regular, hasn't he? He does. He does. But he, he's another one who's, mm. uh, you know, got the air of a natural try scorer about him. Yeah. And, you know, he's got that. He, he's got a bit of pace about yeah, him, as, yeah. as you've seen. Um, you know, and, and again, I'm hoping that over the course of the season we get to see Lee Miners Rangers in action. Mm. You know, if only to catch up with the lads from Italy. <laughs> um, Wigan St. Pat's, they were victorious up at Skirla by 30 points to 12. All the more impressive because St. Pat's could only name 15 players, um, which is a little bit worrying at this early stage of the season is, yeah. that they're already a little bit down on numbers. So I hope that things can look up and uh, there's definitely some scouring around Wigan going on at the moment for Wigan St. Pat's to be able to sign some more players. But they made a positive start to the season. Uh, they've now gone into plus points as far as the season is concerned. They had yeah. a, a few points deducted as well as um, being relegated at the end of last season. So, uh, But yeah, nice to see them on the curve and starting to get a few wins. Elsewhere, Dewsbury Moor Maroons have been absolutely brilliant at the start of the season. They've made it three wins from three, three now. Uh, they fought back from a half-time deficit to win against Stanley 24 points to 14 Brilliant result, that one. In Division 2, a couple of hat-trick heroes to tell you about. So James over at Mighton Warriors, he scored three tries in their high-scoring win over Millen by 44 points to 24. Uh, while over at Shawcross Sharks, they also enjoyed a similar high-scoring victory, this time against Ellenborough Rangers, with Wakenshaw being the man who grabbed a hat-trick. And I believe... But for sure, a handling, he probably could have had about five or six. Yeah. But I think the passes didn't quite reach him at the time when they'd worked a little bit of space for him as well. Other interesting results. Well, Dewsbury Celtic hammered Barrow Island by 32 points to four. But that was interestingly locked up at four points each at half time. Normanton Knights continued their positive start to the season with a 28-6 home win against Saddleworth Rangers. We've already spoken about Oldham St. Anne's, who were too strong for Pilkington Rex on the day, winning by 32 points to 24. And we have Wigan St. Jude's, who edged out Thornhill Trojans by 28 points to 24. Now, here's a little bit more on that game, because uh, earlier in the week, I caught up with Danny Cassidy. And this is our conversation. It turned into a wide-ranging one, really, about Danny's further interests this season. But first of all, I started with asking him about Saturday's game. Green Cooling scores with the 13 Pro-Am Community Rugby League Show. Whilst we were over at uh, Pilkington Rex on Saturday for the big Division 2 game against Oldham St. Anne's. There were some tasty other fixtures that were going on in the division as well. One of those happened over at Wigan St. Jude's where they hosted Thornhill Trojans and it sounded like the comeback of all comebacks. After, what, 50 minutes, uh, Thornhill were 24 points to four up and seemingly set for a win. Um, Then... Enter the comeback, uh, and I'm delighted to be joined on the other end of the line by friend of the show. I can say that, can't I? Danny Cassidy, how are you doing, Danny? All right, mate. Good, mate. How are you? Yeah, really good, really good. I've built that game up enough for you, you know, so I'd, I'd like you to take over and tell me about it, mate. Yeah, well, it was it was a game of two halves, really. I mean, um, I come on after 20 minutes, I think we were losing 16 4, 18 4, and then second half. Couldn't have got any worse. They scored more or less straight from the kickoff. We went 24 4 up, and then I think it took us to about 60 65 minutes before we started playing. Uh, but when you did start playing, I mean, flipping heck, you know, I'm, I'm just looking down that score sheet, and, you know, uh, that first try came uh, for Lewis Mellon, who grabbed a hat trick in the end, didn't he? But um, uh, tw- 22 minutes, then it was 55 minutes, 65 minutes, 72 minutes, and 77 minutes. I mean, wow, he come, come on with a wet sail, though. 
Yeah, uh, it was one of them. It, it shows what we've got as a team. We can all stick in it together to the end. It shows when we go a few tries down, we've still got that belief that we'll come back and get a result. Now, obviously, from a, a community Lions point of view, there's a big tour to Australia happening at the end of the season. Um, and I know that the, the squad's starting to get together and we'll train a little bit over the next sort of few months until... Um, that that is sort of like named as a touring squad, um, and there's there's a Parkinson in there. So Connor Parkinson, obviously a teammate of yours, uh, is is in that squad. Uh, what should we be looking out for him? You know, because I mean he's he's been decent, hasn't he, for St Jude's for a number of years now. Yeah, he's, he's consistent, Connor. You know what you're going to get off him every week. He'll he'll not take a backward step, and he's always there at the right moments. Um, I think he proved that Saturday. He set up, got a couple of tests, set score on himself. Um, he's just he's a big game player when you need him you know especially for me as an half back if I need someone out the back he's always there yeah yeah um, and, and how did you find that game against Thornhill you know because obviously they were playing uh, in Division 1 last year and that's a place where Jude's are, are hoping to get to yeah well uh, I played against them last year and I, I had a chat with a few of the players after the game they've improved massively from where they was at last year and I think Come the end of the season, they'll be in and around the playoffs if they keep going how they are. Um, it was just obviously no one likes losing in games how they did, but for us it was perfect. Yeah, and I noticed you got yourself on the scoreboard as well. How, how did that come about? And you know, here's where you can really big yourself up. And you know, if you, <laughs> if you chipped it over from halfway and that type of stuff, hey, who am I to know? <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it 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 wasn't as uh, spectacular as I'd like. It was it was just literally attacking a line and then spotted half a gap and just went through. Luckily, I had enough get there. Oh, fair play, fair play as well. Uh, and I mentioned before about Lewis Melling getting a hat trick. I mean, he's a he's another guy that give him any sort of opportunity, and he's usually over for four points, isn't he? Yeah, he's, he's just a speed star, so he just needs a little bit of an inch, and he'll, he'll go, and you know he'll, he'll get he'll score your points. Uh, it's not been a bad start to the season, really, has it for for Jude? I know that you you lost up at, at St Anne's um, last week, but you know so far steady as she goes. Yeah, uh, well, we set our goals at the start of the year, and we're still on course for them as it stands. We're just going to keep grinding results out, and I think looking back on Saturday, if we can take that last twenty minutes or so into the season, we'll cause a lot of team problems. Uh, has anything changed in particular? You know, with the with the club, is it just more settled? Is there more players, you know, coming down to training and um, you know being that consistency, like you mentioned before, with Connor? Yeah, well, we've had we had a big influx from 18s again from last year, which is some of what we're doing well. We're always getting more and more, and I think we've been getting 37, 38 lads down training. That's good going, that isn't it? Yeah, so obviously there's competition for places in both teams. You know, you've got to perform well while you're playing 18 the week after. Especially when you look just down the road and at St. Pat's, I think at the weekend they played against Skirler and only only could name 15 players. Um, so it just shows a bit of a contrast, really. Yeah, yeah. Like I say, I think what we, what Jews do with the youth, I mean, they've got two teams at most age groups now, so it's only going to benefit your open age going forward. And Jude is usually one of those clubs that gets, I was going to say gets picked on, that's probably the wrong word in that really, isn't it? You know, for, for scholarships in particular, it provides more than its first year of players to the scholarship system and going into academies and training with professional teams. Yeah, yeah, but what we get if obviously lads don't make it, they don't forget the roots and they, they come back, which again, when they've been playing in and around the pro game, it's going to benefit the players around them. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's a similar sort of thing to yourself, isn't it? Because you've ended up back at, 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 at Jude's, you know, you you you, you seem to be more heavily involved than ever. Because I think when I spoke to you last season, uh, you was like coaching the under tens, and you've got an even more expanded role this year, haven't you? Yeah, so um, I'm assistant coach to the open age women, and I'm doing the under fifteens as well. I mean, that, do, do you ever stop? Do you ever stop thinking about rugby league, mate? So um, I get one day off, so Monday to Sunday, I only have Friday to myself. Every other day, I'm down at Jude's lap, but I won't have it any other way. Yeah, yeah. I love, I love the game, love being around it. Uh, and, and I've got to, you know, compliment you as well with how the, the women's side has been going, because um, you've, you've, you've finished top of the league and you're heading into a cup final, aren't you, in the next couple of weeks? 
Yeah, um, we've finished top of the league undefeated. I think we've only conceded around 30, 40 points, which obviously, of course, of a winter league, some do win. Um, we're in a, a first cup final on Easter Sunday against Batler, which will be a tough test. I think they come to us a f- few weeks back now, and there was probably the hardest game we've had. So it'll be a tough one. And who are some of the players that you know have been going particularly well for the women's side? Well, we've had a, a girl called Anna Dennis. She's just got herself signed at Warrington. We've had um, Georgia, Maul, and Meg, Grace Holden. They've gone to Lee. So again, it proves that we're doing some at right as coaches when girls are taking that next step. It's probably what it's what you want to see, isn't it? You know, because because like you you want to see players develop and and move on, but yet you also know because of like, like you've talked about with the with the lads as well, you know that if it doesn't work out for them for whatever reason, they can come back to Jude's and enjoy the rugby. Yeah, absolutely. And what they've got like like the NCL have, so we can get girls in on a permit to play. Oh, so okay. like if for whatever reason we've got a few missing on holidays, injuries whatsoever, we can get in contact with. Clubs like Warrington, Wigan, Lee get permits of players back. I mean, that's pretty. That's pretty useful. That's something that's uh, uh, perhaps been. It's perhaps been needed, hasn't it? You know, in the these days where, you know, there's there's a million and other commitments, isn't there? When you you're going through, especially summer seasons. Yeah, definitely. I mean, with the women's as well, obviously, a lot of them are mums, so and their kids are playing sports, so they're ferrying the kids about and then getting down for us. So obviously they're not going to be able to be there all the time. So when they're not, we've got that option then of getting players in to give us a lift. So you mentioned about doing so well in this uh, this this winter competition, you know, and, and that, that's a fair level of consistency if you're only conceding what forty points in the games. There, I mean, it shows that you know you, you you've been really up for it most weeks. Um, what are you like as an attacking team? Oh, we we like throwing the ball about, um, but we've got we've got girls who can they're just game changers like kick returns or somewhere to get the spot half a gap they've got which it's good to see we are they have improved massively with how they play rugby but again it's still a learning curve for them all so we're only going to get better uh, has it has it surprised you pleasantly surprised you you know since you sort of got involved with the the, the women's team yeah, I mean, I've I've always watched women's rugby if it's been on, like, your, your Super League sides, but seeing it at an amateur level and how many girls actually play, it is an eye-opener, but it's a good eye-opener. I think it shows what the sport's doing for everyone, and it includes everyone. And particularly around Wigan as well, you know, you've got Oral St James who have, uh, you know, been been going well with uh, getting girls and, and women involved. You've got yourselves there. Ashton Burrs are also making strides in, in that level as well. And then you've got Wigan St Pats, which are trying to make a comeback. Um, you know, so it, it bodes well for the area. Wigan, uh, you know, Lee Miners Rangers, of course, uh, continue uh, and have like, a, uh, a, you know, like about, I think they've got about 150 girls registered with them at the moment which is a phenomenal effort. Yeah, well, we've got, obviously, the open edge. Yeah. We've just got an under-16s team together now, so they've, they've played a couple of teams. And we've got, we're trying to get into process now. We've got girls from 12 all the way up. I mean that, so, that that that's really that that's really crucial, isn't it? Because I suppose at that that age, they've had to either stop or or look elsewhere, haven't they? Yeah, I mean, obviously it. In the long run, it's going to have the same effect as what the men's game have. If you're producing kids from that age, it's just going to have an influx to open age. And has that excited you about getting involved and sort of seeing the the progression? Yeah, yeah. Um, like I say, I've I've loved it. Um, it at first it was I was a bit undecided, obviously, but when I got down, got speaking to them all, and how keen they was to learn, it was. And my my mama made up really. So I mean, I, I know we're by, by the time this goes out, we'll be uh, you know a week ahead of the uh, of the big game that o- over at, at Featherstone uh, should be a cracker, shouldn't it? Yeah, uh, like I said, Batley's probably been our toughest test this year, so I think they're going to come. They're a physical side, but we're just going to match it and hopefully the results will come. Uh, and back onto your side, you know. Um, 
the, with the with with the men's and the first team. You know, again, uh, it's go, going pretty good. Uh, who have you got this weekend? Uh, we've got Saddleworth away this week. That's a tough game, that isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I've not played at Saddleworth for years, but. I was speaking to a couple of lads who I know at Narmer on Saturday there played them and they said they've just got a big pack. So they could stuff toughen up against them, it should be all right. And to be fair as well, they've got plenty of experience. Gavin Dodd, who used to play over at Witness, is still playing and uh, Steve Neal as well, who's been involved for many, many moons as well. Yeah, um, like I say, you in the amateur game you want to play against the best you can, can't you? So playing against X Pros it's better test for us definitely definitely oh well um, I appreciate this catch up to be honest Danny I, I hope that things go well for both of, well for all three of your sides that you're involved in because you're also involved coaching the uh, under 15s aren't you yeah yeah they're, they're a good set of lads as well well I know that you're uh, as, as we've already spoken about you're, you're a busy guy mate um, so yeah. thank you so much I appreciate it and uh, go well no worries, thanks a lot there, thanks for having me. Great to hear from Danny again. He's got to go down as one of the most active guys um, in, in rugby league, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. And, and you know what, it's, uh, it's it's one of those clubs as well where uh, I don't think when we spoke to Mike Woods at uh, Thatterweath, it's, it's similar to, to those, isn't it? You know, you get you get involved because there is so much there, uh, going on. Uh, so you end up, like he was saying, coaching, what was it, the... Uh, Youngsters. Yeah, he's coaching the... He, well, last year he was coaching the under-10s. Under-10s, under it's under-15s. Uh, this, this year yeah. he's coaching the under-15s and he's assistant coach of the women's side yeah, as well, which yeah. has had Doing such well. a great season. Doing well, and, yeah. you know, in, in a couple of weeks' time, uh, Easter Sunday, for those interested, they're playing in the uh, Women's Winter Challenge Cup Final, a game that's going to get played over at Featherstone. I was just going to ask you, where has that been played? Yeah, um, of course, you know, Featherstone been in the news for all the wrong reasons mm. over the last few days, so they're going to probably be hosting as many games as they can uh, over the coming time, and uh, that pitch will be getting even more hammered than it's it's used to. How can they host more than they host already? I don't know, it? but I'm sure they'll find a way. Oh, that's got to be a pitch that never floods. I'm sure they'll find a way. I'm sure they'll find a way. But yeah, to uh, you've got, got to scats off to uh, to, to say Danny. He's, he's a great player to watch. For those of you who have never seen him, if you, if you ever see uh, him on a team sheet uh, or just watch him play, he's really, really good. Uh, uh, and great guy to talk to. It's a character, I think, is known as. In, yeah. You know, and, yeah. and we need those people. Uh, he buys into what we're doing here. Uh, loves to having a chat with uh, with parking us here, here at uh, 13 Pro Am. Uh, and yeah, yeah, hats off to him. He's doing a sterling job. Uh, what What do you make of that though? Because I mean, Thornhill Trojans they got themselves in what many would consider a winning position. They were up 24 points to six in the game. And and that's it, in it to a certain extent. Is it, with a couple of, I suppose it was similar to Pilks in in that sort of sense. You, teams have got to learn how to close out matches, haven't they? Uh, and certainly, but with Thornhill, because uh, uh, they're, they're another one who, who, like Pilks, have tumbled down. But uh, from what we've seen from the results so far, you know that you know they seem to have have got the. That, you know the the team together, like mm. Danny was saying in that, you know he he's played against them, you know pre- previous years, and he feels that they've got a, a better team. You know they're on the up as it were. So it, I'm sure it's something they'll tighten up. At. And I suppose again, like we were saying, it's it, it's better these things happen at the beginning of the season. Then you can identify them and have a chance of putting them right. Definitely, mm. definitely. Now there was another hat trick scored in that one, by the way. Uh, I, I mentioned him, Melling. He, he's another one that's just got the air of a natural try scorer, and, and I love it when we see these players because he doesn't really need much of an opportunity. Uh, and you give him half a sniff and he's in for a try, you know, so fantastic. In Division 3, just two games took place. So Dissington beat Driglington away 14 points to six. They'll be made up with the start, on fire, aren't they? but they'll be so disappointed at conceding the first <laughs> points yeah, of the true, season, yeah. which have come in game number three. So they've now conceded a grand total of six points in three games. Everybody goes on about St. Helens' defence in Super League, don't they? It's the first yeah. thing any commentator, when the commentator on St. Helens always says, they're only averaging eight points against. This is a side that's now averaging only two points against. Yeah, I, I mean, considering where they've come from, uh, they've you know, they're riding the crest of a wave, aren't they? Unbeaten so far. 
they've scored 42 points. Uh, points difference 36. So, uh, I, you know, I think that's just a credit to them. And I mean, uh, let, let's see how they go on the rest of the season. It, will, will they dip if they get any injuries? Mm. We, we, you know, these it's a new venture for them and for us to watch them and see how they you know their journey and this is what's always interesting about mm. new teams coming into the National Conference League mm. and why it is so difficult like I was putting mm. to Callum Fletcher earlier on the diff- it's so difficult to get out of that division mm. when you drop into that division because generally yeah. the teams that are coming in they've come from winning backgrounds yeah. they're used to winning rugby league games they know how to get the results yeah. so immediately you, see, you almost see a bounce effect don't you you know so we saw it with Seaton they had a very very strong mm-hmm. first season then unfortunately lost about five six players to the professional ranks uh, and then had a, a tougher second season we're seeing it so far with Dissington who are being very very competitive at the top end of that division we definitely saw it with Ellenborough last season yeah. who went up with Oldham St. Anne's yeah. and Millham of course Millham was another one of those sides that had been in that division for a couple of seasons it can be so so difficult and the standards between divisions two and three there's not a lot between them is there and no. when and when you look at the top end top of division end, yeah. two Definitely. when you look mm. at the top end of division two there's not much difference between that and division one no. as has been shown so far with uh, how Dewsby Moore have gone about the business yeah, as well yeah. uh, so there was three games that bit the dust uh, so one of those was in Division 1 Waterhead Warriors against Clockface Miners that was called off quite early to be honest yeah, I, think I, saw it was, that, yeah. I think it was Thursday when that got called uh, that was off due to a waterlogged pitch uh, Beverly against Bentley that was called off because the pitch was unfit and Featherstone Lions against East Leeds that also bit the dust due to a waterlogged pitch as well so that brings us nicely onto the fixtures this coming weekend we have Kells hosting Hunslet. We've got Heweth on the road again, but it's a shorter journey for them. This time over to Castleford to face off against Lock Lane. Rochdale Mayfield are at home against York Acorn. I'm interested to see the result of that mm. one. Uh, Siddle up against West Hull. That's a mouth-watering tie if ever there was one, as is this next one. Uh, obviously, the two sides that have uh, quite a social media presence. Oh, yeah, yeah. I bet the bants will be going on <laughs> over the course of the next few days. Uh, the banter bus will be well in action, and it's Thato Heath Crusaders up against Egremont Rangers uh, and Wathbrow Hornets there at home against West Bowling. In Division 1, Clockface Miners are set to host Skirla. Dewsby Moor Maroons are up against Wigan St. Pat's. That's an interesting one, that, game yeah. as far as yeah. that, that division is concerned. Ince Rose Bridge hosts Crossfields. Stanningley make the short trip over to face against Ulton Raiders. Lee Miners Rangers are on the road at Waterhead Warriors. Wollstone Rovers, they're at home to Hull Dockers. And in Division 2, we've got Barrow Island hosting Normanton Knights. Pilky to Rex heading up the M6 to take on Allenby Rangers. Dewsbury Celtic are also making that similar sort of journey up to play against Millham. Shawcross Sharks are away at Oldham St. Anne's. Saddleworth Rangers, they're at home to Wigan St. Jude's. Thornhill Trojans against Mighton Warriors. And then just to complete the fixture list before I come to you for any of your standouts in this, by the way, Steve. Um, in Division 3, Bentley hosting Featherstone Lions. Dissington at home to Beverly. Driglington travel over to Milford, while Lee East are also heading up that the M6 as well, up to play against Seaton Rangers. Yeah. Steve, what are your standouts this week? Yeah, well, certainly from a, a Premier Division, interesting to the, the, the one you've just mentioned about Thatterway Crusaders and, and Agrimont, two teams who uh, obviously we, we know uh, a, a bit about, we know you know, sort of the, the, the pedigree as, as such, but obviously from an Agrimont point of view, yeah. it, it, it's a new venture, this, this league, and uh, and you know that's with Crusaders. I think I probably uh, it, currently, even though you know the results may not uh, uh, sort of bear that out in some respects, uh, I think this look in better shape. Agremont's uh, uh, going to you know find it tougher, uh, but I'm sure you know what we've seen them go away to other places and uh, suddenly you know, they they form and they start putting those those moves on and. and you know, if you don't close them down, they will. You know, they've got the pace there to burn, certainly on the flanks. And they're moving down 
all the way to uh, Division 2, the one that uh, I like the look of. Uh, it's just Oldham St. Anne's against Shawcross Sharks. Mm-hmm. Having, having seen Oldham, you know, so this week, and having seen Shawcross last year, uh, that is going to be an interesting one. Because Shawcross at the moment, like we were saying, they're, they're on fire at the moment. Uh, so, yeah, that that is going to be an interesting one there. All good stuff. Uh, which, which game do you fancy sort of taking yourself off to this weekend? Well, I was possibly going to go down and watch the Thatterweeds Crusaders versus Egra Mountain Rangers uh, because of that that reason. You know, they, they, they both interest me. So uh, I'll probably be down there to uh, run the rule over those guys and hopefully get to a bit of aftermatch comment. Un- unfortunately, I'm not at any of the games this weekend. It's going on holiday. It's going on holiday, I'll it's tell a, you. No, it's a light weekend for me. It's a slightly different setting, you know. So I've got the uh, I've got a Lions on Saturday morning so it's the final 60 of the under 16s that are doing their last trial. Can, can I just get something right when he says Lions on a was it Sunday morning mm, or Saturday no, morning no no this is Saturday, Saturday and morning. on Sunday ah uh, so it, it's the this open is, age. This is not a job at Nosley Safari Park, by the way. No, 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 no not yet. <laughs> not yet. Maybe at the end of the season. Who knows with what's ahead, you know, to be honest with you. Uh, but yes, uh, so it's England Community Lions. Uh, they've reached the, the final 60 of the under-16 selection. Mm. So there's a series of games that are going to be taking place over the course of Saturday afternoon Yeah. Um, with the hopes of... Uh, a final squad of 21, 22 players being named. Yeah. So that that's going to be interesting for all the coaching staff that are involved in, in that day. Uh, and then on, on Sunday, the open age squad is meeting up. So there'll be lads again coming down the road from Egremont. Yeah. There'll be uh, fellas coming in from uh, Hunslet. There'll be, you know, guys coming in from Wigan St. Pat's. Mm. So, again, it gives perhaps an opportunity to me to have a chat with uh, yeah, any of yeah. those guys and see, see how the I games have gone for, off yeah. for next week. And mm. maybe they can give us some comments as well about yeah. how their teams are travelling. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, I'll be looking forward to, uh, you know, the trip over to Wales. I've got to ask him. I've got to ask him about what's going on now. First of all, I don't want to put them off. You know, we've got a full <laughs> season yet. Um, but yeah, I will ask him that as well. To be honest, um, right? Any final thoughts from yourself today? Uh, so, so, slight disappointment we're not doing the game tomorrow because uh, obviously I was uh, I was really looking forward to that. And when I saw that was a, a Thursday night's one, my first thoughts were, "Oh, that'll be a cracker." And then when you came through with your WhatsApp message. Do you fancy going to watching Latchford and Blackbrook on Thursday? I thought, oh yeah, we'll, we'll have a bit of that. But it's not to be, but we'll certainly get there again. Uh, but yeah, I've enjoyed this week. Pilks was really good. Yeah, it was. Yeah, we, we, we got our nice little setup there, didn't we? Even though it was a bit on the windy side and a t- tad rainy, not, not too bad. It could have been worse though. We could have yeah. been on the other side of the pitch, but which we really would have got the wind. What we forgot to mention, yeah. haven't we? We forgot to mention our... our a guest commentator who was with our us. third wheel, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ad or Sullivan, yeah, he took it to it like a doctor watered. He? he did, you know. Well, I did, I did text him, you know, beforehand, and you saw the text yeah. as well, saying, you know, because he's been praising Sam Tompkins on uh, Sky Super League coverage. That's right, yeah. Uh, so I said, well, anything he can do, I'm sure you can do as well. Yeah. Do you fancy joining us? Uh, and he did, you know. And uh, yeah, fair play to him. He, he was he was very good. He was good value. He even laughed at our jokes. Yeah, yeah. He's, uh... he's obviously not heard us. <laughs> <laughs> if if you if you're tuning in we've probably used the same jokes there about four or five times it's like david and goliath word is word is is actually uh, uh signing uh autographs now at sticky wickets yeah. <laughs> that that's the that's the the, the, the club that's at oh club, yeah that's a club Rex, Rex, isn't it? yeah, you know yeah. it's uh it's, it's nothing dodgy it's a, it's a complex because they have a cricket pitch they have a football pitch they have tennis courts they have rugby union rugby league it is rather a bit oh bowls as well oh, it's yeah, it's, yeah. it's a really big place a very very nice place and a, a fantastic place mm. a, fa- a fantastic mm. place i mean you you did nearly have my humor going off on one there by saying what complex in st helens complex yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> and you could have had a real go back at me and I've just admitted <laughs> it so anyway um, I'm going to take us off her before uh, Steve John, gets his John, man. John. Um, get off John sadly <laughs> defeat <laughs> He's coming on again. Oh, I don't know. He's we, wanting another say, you job, we've man. Had, we've had him on once. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, great to do this show again. Thank you ever so much. Um, we'll have a, a slightly differing format next week because of various things that are going on. Because in addition to everything else, there is also um, there, there is also the start of the President's Cup ah, yeah. next Wednesday. Yeah. So uh, look out. We'll, we'll get something put out. We'll hope that you enjoy it. But whatever you're doing this weekend, go and enjoy it. And I'm off to go and enjoy my birthday tomorrow night. Ah, see how we slipped that in the end. Yeah, all on Twitter. Say happy birthday, Dave. See ya. Ta-da. Every tackle, every try, every scrum. Green Cooling is proud to be part of the Community Rugby League family.